All right, guys. So here I'm going to show you how to actually set up a movement, um, set up a movement between two objects, and make it so that we don't even have to use the uh, expression editor. The problem with the expression editor, if you have multiple things going on in the background, if you have maybe a race cars, you know, cars chasing each other, you have like a village and people are pulling carts and, and moving things, um, it, it can bog down a scene with a lot of textures and a lot of things going on. Even if you're referencing stuff. Expressions are not ideal when it comes to rigging. <clears throat> They're just a one way to do it if you have maybe one object. But I'm going to show you how you can actually get items to move, not using the expression editor, but using the connection editor <clears throat> and some math nodes. Using the math nodes are really great because you can actually literally plug one item into another item. It's actually not too shabby. So you see, you have two different wheels. I'm going to have one wheel influence the other. So what we'll do is we graph them both. You can actually click on the icon here, graph when they're selected, and put Apple Connections. Go to Create. <coughs> Sorry, allergies are bugging me a little bit. Go to Create, and then in Create, we're going to go to our General Utilities, and we're going to go to our um, Multiply and Divide node. So move over here. We're going to grab one of these wheels. I'm going to drag them into there. And when you drag them in, mine is going to ask you where do you want to put them. So I middle mouse drug, drug or drug did, <laughs> middle mouse uh, drug it right here. Go to my input, and we're going to scroll down to our rotate. And you want to check it too. So this guy rotates on the Y. <clears throat> so we're going to go rotate Y. Go to input one, and then we're going to go to input right there. This guy. Input one. Pretty cool. Now we're going to close that for a second. So what we need to do now is go to our second wheel. We need to make sure that he's connected on his um, rotate too. So let's go to him real quick. And let me see here. There we go. Got to rotate. So I'm going to grab my math node. I'm going to pull him over here to rotate. And you'll see this guy flip. Unfortunately, it's not the most ideal for him to flip. What we can do is move him into a group. And in that group, we can position him the way that we want. So to do that, and I love groups, they really help out a lot. I'll do group, modify, center pivot, rotate him 90 degrees. In this case, we'll do negative 90. And let's put him into position. Are you completely cheating the plus here to get a bigger radius control? Totally, totally cheating. <coughs> and you'll see when we grab the other wheel, we get the rotation we want. Look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, if it doesn't do exactly what you want, what you can do is go into the math node and punch in a negative 1 in the input 2. Um, and that can fix sometimes some of the issues of it not rotating the way that you want. In our case, ours is working great. So what we need to do now is connect this rotation of this wheel with the movement of the locator. So let's go in here, deselect for a second, get our locator. I'm going to move the locator a little bit out more. So we're going to grab the group that would be our mech arm. And we're going to parent it to our locator, hit P. And then now what we're going to do, actually before we do that, let's do Control-Z for a second. I'm going to watch your order of operations. It's just easier to do this things this way. We're going to grab our locator. And we're going to determine wherever he moves, he's going to influence this wheel. So when he translates, he's going to rotate. Let's check out what that translate is. Let's see so we got it on the Z. <coughs> so I'm going to go in here. I can literally just open up this time my connection editor. There you go. And we're going to have him translate. And what was it? Z. Let's go and translate Z. There you go. Translate Z. What's he going to influence? Well, when he translates a Z, load right, he's going to rotate. Let's open up his rotate. 
and just rotate Y. We're going to connect that. So now you'll see when I grab this locator and I move, you'll see the wheels turn. See that? Pretty cool. Now, so you'll see we have this all connected and you can even move it out of screen, make it go faster. You can connect this to an SDK if you want. Or um, we can delete him for now. Keep this connection between these two guys. And uh, what we're going to do is create an SDK within ourselves. So let's go and make a controller. Make sure these guys aren't parented underneath anything. So make sure you unparent them so they're not underneath the geo. They can uh, get conflicting information and the method will break. Keep my finger on the V key. Right there. Move it down. And uh, just maybe rotate that a little bit. 90 degrees. So I'll move 90. I'll move it up a little bit. That's going to be our main controller. Freeze, modify. Let's actually check its orientation in 3D space. That's fine. Uh, modify, freeze, transform. So I command you. Have it frozen. <coughs> so we can put this guy in charge of this group. So we can do a pretty cool hierarchy here. Um, so let's go and get that started. Sorry, my mouse is flickering because it delayed because of Camtasia. So now what we're going to do is grab the group. I'm going to shift select this guy. I'm going to hit P. This guy's in charge of everything. See it moving? So what I did was I point constraint. I didn't do it just now, but I had an earlier version. I point constraint each one of these guys to this group. And you can actually see there's my group point constraint. And there's my geo point constraint too. Right there. So each one of them are pointing to this group. And now I have the controller for it. But what we can do now with this controller, and the reason why I did that is because the math that will break if you do, do a direct connection. So with that, I can actually still go in here and rotate this guy. <coughs> so we can say, open up SDK. This is a, a, a place where the SDK works out really well. Our centering key. That's what SDK stands for. Go in here. And the driver is the controller. The driven is this guy. So when the driver translates on the Z, you always have to double check, make sure you get the right one. So when he translates on the Z, this guy is going to rotate on the Y, which we just punched in earlier. And you can control, the nice thing about this one is we can control the speed on this particular scenario on the whole track. And you can even apply this to a, a car. We're not going to get into it here just yet. But the math's pretty um, pretty much the same doing the nodes. So now we can rotate this based on our movement. So I can key that. Let me go over here and move this over here. <coughs> I can rotate this just a little bit. Key that. And move this over here. And rotate this just a little bit. And key that. That's pretty cool. So now we have a little automated wheel happening in here. Pretty cool, huh? That's my wheel noise. If you didn't know. Um, so you can you can relate that to an actual object. So you can actually get a car to roll the way that you want. Now, if you want it consistent, you can keep that math node in there, and you can actually use another math node to speed up the wheel's movement based on the size of the object, the radius of the wheel and so forth. We're not going to get into it in this one, but um, I can make another uh, instructional video showing and demonstrating that.
Lots about it, Mikai. All right. Well, automated. So we can do set trimming key with this. I'm just doing set trimming key of speed. But the thing is, I don't have to set trimming key both the wheels. I'm actually just having one. And then the math node's taken over with the other guy. So it's all taken care of. All right. That's about it. You can do that with like all four, four wheels if you wanted. 